finally mounted our Starlink. Yay. We've had this since, I don't know when, long time, six months, and we've never had time to install it. But uh, finally, we got through the holidays and we're able to get back down to the boat. And now it is in. So we're going to show you how we mounted it. And then we'll show you a little bit about the process of mounting and some of the parts that we used. So here's the final process of the Starlink mount that we did on our Leopard 48. As we told you, you know, we had to cut the cable uh, and then redo the cable in order to get it through a bulkhead. We'll show you that in a moment. One of the keys to that was we wanted it to be removable, either for weather, um, for any other kind of conditions, and then for security purposes as well. If we leave the boat for a while, we want to be able to pull it and put it inside. So. We used the pipe mount that you can buy from Starlink, uh, and then we mounted that pipe mount onto this removable rod holder. Very easy to remove this rod holder, so when the time comes, we simply slide it out, and then it has a, uh, a fixture that's mounted to the coach roof to put on there. So it makes it very easy to remove and then put back in place when it's time. And that's how it works. So really, really great. You mentioned with that little short piece of cable that we had coming from the dishy that's outside of the boat here mounted on the coach roof. Uh, and then we connected it right here. So this is where we cut the cord. And then we use this bulkhead fitting here. So we do have some strain relief on it here. Mounted the bulkhead right there on the, the corner of the boat. Very easily just to turn that. Pops right out. And then this comes back with the dishy inside the boat for security purposes. So that's very easy to do. If you notice when I put that back on, slides right in there, snaps in, do a twist, and there it is. So I'll pull that off. That comes with a dishy. And then we do have this weather cover as well. Um, it did have a chain piece to be able to put it on and keep it on there, but we figured it would be dangling and banging on the boat all the time. So we're going to go with the option that we'll never lose it. <laughs> That's so funny. Yeah, it the most is convenient fun. place on our boat for the modem was right over here where we have the TV and near the control panel on the Leopard 48. This is a nice place to put it for a couple of reasons. Number one, we do have a 110 volt available for it right there. So there's the modem. And then we ran the cable that goes to the dishy up through uh, the bulkhead here and then inside behind the control panel. So from there, we did get in behind the control panel and we'll show you kind of where we ran it out to the bulkhead. It was very easy for us to run that cable through the bulkhead back behind the control panel. Of course, went in there. And then from there, we went up through here, pulled this box off where the uh, winch is. And then it was very easy to go right outside and through this bulkhead and then into this panel here. And there really wasn't much else in this panel. Then we ran it all the way over and ran that cable here. And then, of course, it mounts to where we put that bulkhead fitting in there for the dish sheet. That was a really nice, clean area for it to be in there. We put some strain relief on it as well by holding it up on the top of the deck, too. So really, really great, easy, convenient way to do it. We thought it was a good mount for our Starling. Now, how long did this project take? You know, you probably could have done it, I would say, in a, in a couple, three hours, maybe. Um, except we decided while we had that panel area open, we got up inside of there, which, by the way, you do that by removing your refrigerator on your L48 and crawl up in there. And Bill did a great job of cleaning up a lot of other wiring we had in this well. So for our project, yeah, pretty much a full day. And we have great Starlink connection, of course. No surprise to anybody there. Yeah, so it, it worked out really great. We think we got the right mounting area for it. There's probably not any lines per se that are going to grab it. We've got to watch it a little bit when we're running the parasail. But even then, those parasail lines are well secured and away from that Starlink. So we think we're going to be real safe when we're sailing. Great. Thanks, Steven. I can't wait to use my Starlink on a trip. Okay, we're about to mount our... Starlink unit onto our Leopard 48. We thought a lot about how we were going to mount this uh, to where it can be not only, you know, very usable while we're offshore and at a dock, uh, but also removable. And we want to make sure it's removable for security purposes, number one, be able to put it away for theft purposes. And then if there were extreme weather of any condition, if you're going through hurricane season, you want to be able to 
stow it and put it away. So in order to do that, you have to have a cable connection of some sort um, going from the dishy uh, into the boat and then into your modem. So we'll show you some of those components. Our plan is to take that dishy. We've actually got a rod holder that we're going to use to mount it outside of the coach roof. And we'll show you in a moment where that goes. So the rod holder essentially becomes a part of the dishy for us. But in order to get it through here and then also to have a removable bulkhead fitting, we are going to have to cut the lengthy cable that comes with the Starlink unit. Uh, and then we'll run another fitting on the other end, which goes, of course, to the modem. To do that, we have these components over here. And so this is essentially going to be our bulkhead fitting. We're going to cut the wire, come into this side of the bulkhead fitting from the dishy. The bulkhead fitting will fit on a certain place on the boat, and we'll show you that in a moment. The other end of the wire that we cut comes into the back side of that. That's permanently mounted. We never have to remove that. So then what we have is the ability to have a twist off to be able to remove this. And that way we can take the dish off, store it on board, or move it for security purposes. Various and sundry fittings, O-rings, and then a cap to go onto that bulkhead fitting when it's not in use with an O-ring on it too for wire purposes. So next we'll show you where we're going to mount it on the outside of the boat. And the last thing we'll show you, it will be mounted there. Right now we can't do it per se because of the way the cable is going into the rod holder. It will eventually come out to the end of the rod holder. The uh, esoteric and uh, unexplainable color code has been uh, adhered to. This is a pass-through type fitting, which some people like and some people don't. And it is a shielded fitting with a shield. What is the shield for? <sighs> noise control, bleeding off noise. Mm. Any kind of stray electrical Any charge. Stuff. Yep. yep. Or static. Cool. And there's the guacamole. Sustenance the project. Here are a few of the connector parts that we used as we mounted the Starlink and we will put the complete list in the notes.